So what inspired me to set up Capability Journey Recruitment was about 10 years ago and I was looking for a role to re-engage with my career and I was looking for a role that I could do ideally on a flexible basis. But as soon as I talked to headhunters and recruiters, the shutters went down. But I could see that there were heaps of people just like me who had loads of experience. And there were lots of companies out there who actually just wanted great talent and really, quite frankly, didn't care how they worked. Or actually, they didn't really need them full time. So I saw that there was a marketplace. So I jumped ship from my job, which I found, and, uh, and set up a to agreement. I think the world of work is changing, and there's a significant trend towards people working differently and how organisations engage with individuals and how people engage with their career. And there's now a huge demographic shift. We've got four generations at work. There's a significant number of people who are actually looking for flexible working, part-time working. It goes beyond the realms of just working mothers. 52% um, of men would ideally like to work part-time flexibly in their next career. Um, a significant proportion of our population in work are baby boomers, of which 44% would ideally like to work part-time. We've got a new generation of Gen Y coming through who just approach their careers differently. And they're looking for life outside work. And we know that 89% of them um, consider work-life balance significantly more important than their salary. And in fact, 33% of them would ideally like to work part-time. So there's a huge trend out there towards new ways of working that's just not going away. So in terms of people who are actually in a job and are looking to approach their employer for, um, to consider flexible working, um, the first thing that we would suggest that, they, that I would suggest that they do is to actually really take a good look at how the job gets done and really a good look at how is the job designed, what are the things that determine how, how a job gets done, what's the workflow, what's the predictability, and what would happen if you're not there on a particular day, what would happen in an emergency, and what would happen, do you actually need to be present to, to conduct some of the activities. So take a really good look at actually the activities that get done and actually the things that determine the successful outputs of that role, which will then help you understand actually, you know, can that role be done on a reduced hour basis, is it important that somebody's there all the time, um, or actually does it do, you know, can you delegate that to somebody else or, or can you pick it up in an, an, at another point in time? The second thing that I would advise is actually if you find that it's quite, quite difficult and you can't justify um, to uh, reduce your hours and do it on a part-time basis, because um, not all roles work on a part-time basis, you know, jobs are, uh, our jobs are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and it's quite challenging. So another way is actually to think about potentially sort of sharing up with somebody and dividing the role in two, segmenting your job and seeing how you can actually bring two people together to do one job. Uh, the main reason was to do with work-life balance and being able to spend uh, time with my children who are relatively young while they're still young. I found flexible working to work very well for me, um, the way that my work life you know, works as it requires some flexibility from me, some flexibility from my wife to make this work. So I think there's a higher degree of flexibility in terms of arranging meetings with clients, etc., than I had initially envisaged. I would say it's had no adverse impact on my career. I say I've some of it's been a positive impact. I feel like I'm more um, invigorated.